The Batman Arkham series has produced some of the greatest superhero games of all time, with long lasting stories that can be replayed countless of times and still be an amazing experience every time you play them. But can the same really be said about some of the DLC that came with the games as well? Because along with these games, many playable DLCs have been released and many of them can be both really good and really bad. It really is a hit and miss with them. So that's why in this video, we're going to be going over every single playable story DLC, ignoring all the challenge packs and ranking them from worst to best to answer the question, what is truly the best and worst Batman Arkham DLC missions in this entire franchise? So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now let's get into it, shall we? Starting off with number nine on this list and the worst Arkham DLC in the entire series is going to be the Catwoman Arkham episode in Arkham Knight, which in my opinion is probably the most blatant copy and paste job I've ever seen in these games because this mission is literally just a complete ripoff of her final mission in Arkham City, which takes place within Hugo Strange's vault and in order to proceed, you have to collect a certain number of security keys from the Tiger Guards, open the vault and proceed with the mission, which ends in a combat section. And what do we get in Arkham Knight's version of Catwoman's mission? We sneak around, steal key cards, and end it off with an unnecessarily difficult combat section. I just think it's absolutely shameful to have to pay money to be able to play the DLC, which clearly seemed like some last minute BS, because everyone else's mission had some unique episode dedicated to them, where Nightwing had to deal with Penguin at GCPD, and Red Hood dealt with Black Mask at the Steel Mill. But apparently, they chose to make the exact same mission from Arkham Knight in a paid DLC and thought no one would notice. This is one of the main reasons as to why this DLC is so low on this list, but one of the other main reasons is because the ending section with the Riddler bots is just so unnecessarily difficult for absolutely no reason whatsoever. It literally just seems like a way to somewhat extend the mission by making it difficult, so it seems like you got your money's worth. Instead of having a face-off with Riddler himself, in which they just have him locked up in GCBD, speaking to you through a phone on the PA system. It was just really all around disappointing to see this from Rocksteady, who up at this point made an amazing base game and some really cool DLCs for the past games as well, but just decided to take a shortcut with this one for reasons beyond my comprehension. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but in my opinion, this is definitely the worst DLC in this entire game franchise, as it doesn't do anything unique with the gameplay or the story, and is literally just a cut and paste of what they made us do with Catwoman all the way back in Arkham City, and was just such a letdown for paid content. Next up is number 8 on this list, which to everyone's surprise is the Red Hood Arkham episode. And yes, I know you're all screaming at your screen right now, saying that it's Red Hood and he's the most unique character you play in the game other than Harley Quinn in her episode. And yes, that is true. He is one of the most unique characters that we play as in this game altogether as he's the only character we ever control that uses guns. But even though that's the case, purely coming from an unbiased position, the content that we get in this episode just is not as good as any of the other Arkham episodes in Arkham Knight and definitely isn't better than some of the other DLC missions we get in the other games. And the reason I say this is purely based on the fact that in general, the Arkham episodes are just challenge packs reskinned to be for different characters in the game, like Nightwing and Red Hood for example. And Red Hood's mission is the episode that plays the most like an actual challenge pack as the moment you enter the mission, you're greeted with a combat section and a pretty good interrogation scene, but after that, the screen just fades into a loading screen and transitions straight into a predator section, which I really wouldn't expect for a game like this, as usually we're able to walk through the building, maybe go through a door or a vent in order to get to the next combat or stealth section, but in this, we're just directly taken to each section by the game automatically instead of making our way there ourselves. This is exactly why I say Red Hood is the most challenge pack alike, as there's barely any real story to follow in this mission, other than we want to chase Black Mask out of Gotham, and we need to get through his steel mill in order to reach him, and once we reach him, we get probably one of the worst boss fights in this entire game as again it's another combat section and all you have to do is beat black mask down three or four times and you defeat him which literally takes less than a minute to do and isn't really the boss fight i was expecting with someone like black mask it was just all so weird and unsatisfying but in all honesty i really think this entire mission could have been done so much better especially since this is the first and only time in the series we ever get to play as jason todd and for such a cool and beloved character in the dc universe to get such a short dlc mission which is so disappointing and unfortunately is going to be at the number eight position on this list as the second worst DLC within the Arkham series. But up next at the number 7 spot is Robin's Arkham episode being flip up a coin where you play as Robin after the events of Arkham Knight trying to stop Two-Face's money smuggling operation within Hell's Gate Disposal Services. Now this mission just like Red Hood's is another challenge pack reskin as every section you play through you're just teleported to as they can phase you into them every time. But Robin's mission at least allows you to traverse through areas as you're technically only faded into one area which is the second half of the mission. The first half being a really extravagant predator mission which takes up most of the time with the actual mission, as everything else is just combat and one small sort of difficult stealth mission. But other than that, the mission is all around laid out as a challenge map with some story built within it, as your whole goal is to stop Two-Face, which surprise surprise, is a combat section that he isn't even a part of, other than the ending sequence, which is just an interactive cutscene similar to Hush's side mission in the main game. The main reason why this is so low on this list is again, just like the other two, it's just a really big challenge pack that doesn't really add anything to the main game, or does anything spectacular in any way as a mission in this game. It's just a really short mission, compacted into one area with a really bad boss fight at the end. And I wouldn't even call it a boss fight because you don't even get to fight Two-Face in the end. He just sits in his chair the entire time. The mission is only above the other two purely because there's more freedom of where you can go 
in the mission as the map is much bigger and there's little challenges here and there like the stealth mission for example which is sort of hard and the hacking puzzle but other than that the mission is again really disappointing that could have been so much better in so many different ways as i think the devs were just allergic to doors because what's the fun in having a whole dlc mission and not allowing us to traverse the entire building but instead automatically moving us to each section it's just not what should have been made for the dlc and all the other episodes on this list if i'm being honest and next up at number six is harley quinn's arkham episode and finally we're allowed to move freely can you believe it we aren't just stuck in a cycle of beating up bad guys and then being teleported to the next section automatically we're technically still stuck in a linear state but i'm just happy we're able to traverse the place as we wish and that alone is a good enough reason as to why this mission is so much higher than the last three other than that this mission overall is really cool and detailed as we get to play as harley quinn for the first time in this series as she has an entirely new kit with different weapons and apart from the combat she has a whole new playstyle with her mayhem mode which is an instant takedown in combat and her own unique ui such as her meters on the left and the gps text but i think the coolest thing that we get in this dlc is psychosis mode also known as her version of detective vision which is probably the most disturbing thing you see in this game other than professor pig's victims in a side mission as the moment you open psychosis mode you're instantly greeted with a darker more grittier version of its detective counterpart we also notice the scribbles on the wall that are completely illegible only being able to see one note on the wall that reads dear god i'm alone which also makes you feel really bad for harley as ever since the joker died she's literally been alone and when you realize that joker really never cared for her well-being whatsoever it's just so sad to see but the last thing that psychosis mode gives us is harleen quinzel which for those of you that don't know is harley quinn's alter ego as before she became harley quinn she was harleen quinzel a practicing psychiatrist completing her residency at blackgate prison which we see in full detail in arkham origins where she first meets the joker and turns into the harley quinn we see today but while in psychosis mode if you stick around for a certain amount of time we get to hear harleen speaking to harley within her own mind attempting to change her ways and begging her to stop being what the joker created as even she knows he didn't care about her like she thinks and this ignites a really cool section in the game as harley actually acknowledges the voice and responds to her out loud and it's just really interesting to see harley actively fighting against her own self to go back to what she once was as it seems like harley herself knows that it's way too late for that and she's so long gone at this point that she does not care these little details is why this mission is so much higher than all the other ones on this list but the reason why it isn't any higher is because of how linear it actually is compared to some of the other missions you'll see on this list and also because it's another reskin challenge pack which doesn't feel like one for the most part but just because it doesn't feel like it doesn't mean it isn't one because we get two pretty big stealth sections in this mission and a whole lot of combat sections as well which eventually leads to a really weird nightwing boss fight which is just another huge reason why it's higher than the last three as we actually get to fight a hero on this and compared to the black mask boss fight nightwings isn't too easy especially with his stun sticks the only thing that doesn't make sense and the reason why i called it weird before is the fact that somehow harley is able to actually beat nightwing in this fight when he's canonically on par with batman in his combat skills so i don't know what's going on there but just looking at the content we get in this dlc altogether it's definitely one of the best arkham episodes in this game but as the dlc in itself it just doesn't compete with some of the others on this list which are full-fledged missions that either takes place within the main game's map or just isn't as linear as this mission is which brings us to the number five position on this list which is the nightwing arkham episode gcpd lockdown where we play as nightwing to stop penguin from trying to escape gcpd custody by having his goons take over the building along with lucius fox who plays the role of oracle in this mission with him on the comms helping us take out goons with different takedowns now i'm gonna get this out of the way that this mission again like the other arkham episodes is literally a challenge pack reskinned for nightwing i don't know how many times i've said this already i probably sound like a broken record at this point but the reason why this is the best arkham episode of all of them excluding batgirls is because it's honestly the one that plays the least like a challenge pack and more like an actual batman side mission like harley's for example as in this mission you're not actually stuck within a building for once as you can traverse the outskirts of the building for different parts of the mission and you're able to see details of how gotham has been without batman after scarecrow's attack on gotham as apparently jim gordon is the new mayor of the city which is pretty cool to see but as for the dlc in itself it starts out with a small puzzle using the remote electric charge within one of penguin's weapon caches which has you do some combat and interrogate a thug leading you to the escape attempt on the roof of the gcpd building a majority of the mission is the stealth section within the top three floors of the building as you get the elevator working again to free penguin and capture him the stealth mission in itself is somewhat challenging as on each floor there are a handful of regular thugs and one minigun thug on each one which is what makes it really challenging as you'll need to find a way to take them out alone without being killed as once you enter a fight with a minigun thug it alerts all the others but other than that this mission isn't that long as this takes the most time to complete the mini story it possesses is pretty good overall and nightwing's comedic back and forth with penguin on the comms is really enjoyable as well but of course even with all that it just doesn't compete with the other dlcs on this list as every other dlc are very developed missions with a lot more to them than just being a reskin challenge pack but out of all the arkham episodes excluding backgrounds in my opinion this is the best and most enjoyable to play through purely because of how much the building you're able to explore and because it feels the most like a main game side mission than the others do but now for number four on this list which is the first dlc that isn't from arkham knight which is harley 
early Queen's Revenge from Arkham City that takes place not long after the events of the main game and has you playing as Robin to start off the mission as Batman's disappeared while trying to free GCPD officers kidnapped by Harley Quinn in the Sionis Steel Mill. But as you get into the mission, you find Batman's utility belt lying on the floor and realize that Harley Quinn's apprehended him. Where at this point, the mission takes you back two days earlier when Batman originally investigates the case of Harley's kidnapping and allows you to play as Batman, allowing you to see what really happened to Batman as midway he's shot by Harley knocking him unconscious, switching us back to the perspective of Robin and leading us to find Batman trapped within a monument of Joker built by Harley, which proceeds to a stealth section in order to get the key from Harley in order to free Batman from the monument. And in the end, Harley plants bombs around the steel mill and prompts a five minute timer to stop them as you're able to play as Batman in this final section, which finishes off with a combat section against the robots you find at the Wonder Tower during the Rachel Ghoul section and Harley hiding the final bomb within the shrine itself and lets it explode with both Batman and Robin escaping with the cops and Harley. Now, this DLC is really good in my opinion as it's the only time we actually get to play as Robin in this game and it's more of a mystery that you can solve as you get through the mission as this is one of the only times in any of the games that Batman is the one being saved and not someone else. This DLC is as high as it is purely because of how much content we actually get in this as it's about an hour of content and it takes place within the city itself rather than being stuck in one single area like you are in the Arkham Knight episodes. You're able to freely move wherever you want within the steel mill as it's used previously in the main story so it's pretty expected that you'd be able to do whatever we want within the building. But overall the story is pretty standard and feels like a mission that you complete within the main game to continue on and doesn't feel out of place whatsoever within the game at all. And the fact that you're able to switch back and forth with Robin and Batman in order to try and solve the case of Batman's disappearance in the Robin section and work through the solution in Batman's is really cool and implemented really well as playing as Robin doesn't feel forced or just jammed into the game just because the devs wanted Robin as a playable character. The only flaw I'd say is capturing Harley isn't that hard and is a combination of a stealth section and grappling up to her in the end to capture. But other than that, it's a pretty solid DLC with an hour worth of extra content to enjoy and being able to play as another character other than the Batman is always fun as long as the gameplay and story is done right and this definitely was. Next up is Season of Infamy sitting at number 3 on this list which is the side mission DLC in Arkham Knight and yes I know y'all gonna say why did you put a full on story pack below a bunch of DLC missions? Well the reason is that these DLCs take place within the main game city and uses the city within the DLC such as different buildings like the Elliot Memorial Hospital for Rachel Gould's mission and a bunch of other different areas for Mad Hatter's mission. Also you get to access a bunch of different villains when playing through these as you get to face off with Mr. Freeze, Killer Croc, Mad Hatter, and the League of Assassins. The only thing I'd say negative about these is that they're all relatively short, but they weren't short to the point where they're too short and not too long in a sense the missions become repetitive because that was my biggest gripe with the main game side missions is that they were way too long and became really repetitive and boring. But the thing about the DLC missions is that they were some of the best crafted missions in this entire game as again they weren't too long or short and kept you interested in the story by not having you search for things on your own or having you get derailed at certain points. This ranking being put up against the Arkham City Harley DLC was really hard so don't think it was an easy decision because it wasn't as I was so tempted to put this below because of the amount of content that we get in Arkham City but I think with the amount of different missions and the areas we can explore within the season of Infamy DLC just edges above City's DLC as yes the missions and stories are concise but they are at the same time really enjoyable and as mechanics that wasn't already playable in the main game like the bomb diffuser used in the Mad Hatter mission and we also get to use more Batman's equipment too that we don't get to use in the main game at all like the remote electric charge for example. The designs of each mission is absolutely top tier and it really seemed like the devs put more work into to these missions and any of the other side missions the main game has to offer and the Arkham episodes because these absolutely trump all the others. Well, most of them. But overall, I personally think that the Season of Infamy deserves to be at the number 3 spot purely because of the amount of content that you get access to within them and because they're some of the best design missions in the Arkham games in general. And now we get to the number 2 spot on this list which is the Batgirl Matter of Family Arkham episode and there really isn't much I need to say about this because out of all the Arkham episodes and DLCs in general from that game, this is definitely the best as it has its own mini story and is the longest DLC mission in the entire game coming up to about an hour but essentially this episode takes place sometime after Arkham Origins but before Asylum and obviously you play as Batgirl along with Robin as Joker's taken Commissioner Gordon hostage with a number of his police officers on an abandoned amusement park rigged with explosives around the island. Your mission as Batgirl is to save the hostages, defuse the bombs, and apprehend Joker and Harley Quinn. This mission in my opinion felt like you were honestly playing a standalone Batgirl game because it really felt like you were playing a more advanced version of Arkham Asylum as the entire mission takes place on one closed area while being being able to traverse above, below, and anywhere you want on the map. This mission also shows that Batgirl was the one to create a more advanced version of the remote hacking device that we see Batman use later on in the game, which is pretty cool to see as Robin calls this out when she uses it for the first time. I think this mission overall played really well and the fact that it plays out like a legitimate Batman mission rather than just a challenge pack like the other Arkham episodes really shows the level change that the devs made with this DLC versus the others. It really doesn't make sense to me as to why they would make such an amazing DLC like this for Batgirl but just not put the exact same amount of effort into the other episodes it just doesn't make sense. Maybe there was a time constraint there.
there or budgeting issues but hey i'll take at least one good arkham episode because if all of them follow the exact same pattern it'd be pretty disappointing the story for this mission is really well done and plays really into the fact that barbara is essentially saving her father from the most dangerous man in gotham which is what batman usually does and it was pretty cool to see the ending interaction between them both as she struggles to even look him in his eyes when speaking to him i think that's one thing that arkham knight really did well in the series other than making an amazing looking game the character development within this game was just spectacular and although some of the storytelling in the main game can be bad at times a majority of it was good and paced really well just like the story in this dlc it's just a shame that they managed to screw up jason's character because he could have been done so much better in this game especially with his side mission but overall the amount of content that we get in this dlc mission and the fact that it's literally just a mini batman game in itself and feels like you're playing a full-fledged batgirl game automatically puts this at one of the top spots on this list and solidifies it as the number two position in my opinion but now we've reached the part you've all been waiting for and after everything that's been said throughout this entire video it's time to finally answer the question you've all been so eagerly patient to hear what is the best batman arkham dlc in this entire franchise but before we get into the number one spot on this list don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've made it this far as i post videos every single week on either saturday or sunday and have tons of shorts dedicated strictly to the arkham games on this channel so if you're into that sort of thing subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to keep up with my weekly uploads as it helps me out a lot but now the promo out of the way let's get to the number one spot on this list with the greatest batman arkham dlc in this entire series which is cold cold heart from arkham origins now right off the bat this mission is about two hours long which automatically puts this high on this list as it's played out like a normal story mission but specifically for mr freeze and the second reason why it's this high on this list is because it's a story based off an episode of the batman animated series called heart of ice which sees the origins of mr freeze and how he became the man we see today in the villain who's just trying to save his wife but for those of you that don't know this mission starts you out playing as bruce wayne hosting a new year's eve ceremony at wayne manor when mr freeze bursts through the building and kidnaps a man named ferris boyle who owns goth corp a humanitarian company and as you work through the story you learn that mr freeze's true identity is victor freeze who worked under ferris boyle creating secret weapons for him in exchange that he finds a cure for his wife nora and when freeze finds out that boyle never intended to uphold his end of the bargain freeze tries to develop the cure himself but is stopped and assaulted by boyle which leads to an explosion of super cool fluids from one of freeze's weapons affecting both him and a guard's metabolism so that he can only survive in sub-zero temperatures and by the end of the story we get a standoff against freeze much like in arkham city where we need to take him down a certain number of times before we defeat him which in my opinion is one of the best boss fights in this game as arkham origins is known for having some of if not the best boss fights in this entire series but in the end Ferris manages to freeze batman and attempt to kill both freeze and nora but in complete batman fashion he frees himself from the ice and subdues boyle and manages to save both freeze and nora's lives and the credits roll in my opinion this is probably the best storytelling that we get out of the entire game as it's essentially a remake of the heart of ice episode from batman the animated series but on a much larger scale i really like that we're able to play as bruce wayne without the batman costume as we aren't used to seeing him without access to all his gadgets we also get to play with a really unique suit known as the xe suit which allows batman to be submerged in sub-zero temperatures and not freeze to death this mission also takes place within the main city which is a plus as the developers actually managed to use the resources given to them to make a really great experience within the dlc this mission in my opinion is the best as it's the longest dlc out of the entire series and completely implements the origins of one of the best batman villains in his rogues gallery and executes both the story and the gameplay elements at the highest level but i think the fact that it gives the player nearly two hours worth of content and just keeps adding more and more new elements that we didn't get to see in the main game and still be able to pull off an amazing story just seals the deal for me and answers the question that cold cold heart is without a doubt the absolute best batman arkham dlc in this entire series and that's all i gotta say about that and with that we reached the end of the video hope you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel as i post videos every single week and I have several shorts on this channel dedicated to the arkham game so you always supply with content no matter what click on the bell symbol to check out my deep dive on the arkham origin side mission and the video to the right of that to check out a video i think you'd like on my channel as if you like this one you'll definitely like that video i hope you have an amazing rest of your day and i'll see you all next week with another video Peace.